Hey, Black Women Rise community. Great to have you here. I'm going to uh, turn it around in a second, just giving some folks a minute to jump on. All right, so let me see. I'm still learning Periscope, so how to turn this around. Hi, everybody. It's so great to see you all. Just let me get set up here so we can get started. All right, awesome. So I wanted to say welcome, welcome, welcome to all the new ladies who joined the Black Women Rise community. Yay! Who heeded the call to take charge not only of your life, but your career as a black woman, either current or emerging leader. So I wanted to just do a little lunch, kind of chat and chew while we were together. And if you have some black woman leaders who you would like to share this with, if you swipe this way, so to the right, <laughs> you can share this on Twitter. Um, or with your followers here on Periscope. I know I invited a couple of you to join Periscope today. And so another maintenance piece with the Periscope is that if you like anything that the broadcaster or the person doing the video is saying, if you tap the screen, it will give them some hearts to let them know that you're feeling what they're saying. Also, there is a comment box. So you can also put in comments. Um, if, you, if you like something, say, yes, girl, yes, yes, sis. <laughs> Just so we have a little call and response. So I'm really excited that you all are here and joining me today. So one, I know I said welcome, but I wanted to give you just a little information about me. So you joined the community. You probably joined to get the 12 effective uh, leadership resources for black women, which is available on blackwomenrise.com. So in the title of this video, if you go there, there's that free leadership guide for black women. So thank you for, for downloading that. And so many of you have shared it. <laughs> so we, I really appreciate that. But I wanted to do this broadcast as well as a video that will play later to let you know a little bit about Kiwa and introduce myself. So right now, I am a full-time entrepreneur, and what I do is that I provide coaching and training, um, leadership specifically, and life design coaching for black women who are ready to take charge of their lives so that you all can fulfill your purpose, honor your calling, and become the leader you know that you are meant to be. When we look at the statistics, a recent report just came out that almost 50% of black women professionals, highly qualified and credentialed, are being overlooked for promotions. They feel stifled in, in when they are in leadership or they're not getting to leadership. And so I created the Black Women Rise even before that statistic came out <laughs> because that was my experience as well as the experiences of other black women leaders and professionals that I knew. And I wanted to create a community to start to speak to that. If you see me looking up and to the side, it's because I have some notes. <laughs> so I don't lose my place because I wanted to make sure that I share everything with you. And that's the Kwanisha of today. I have a master's in social work. I have professional certifications or credentials in master life coaching and corporate life coaching. So I'm highly qualified to do what I do. But the Kwanisha of today is really great. But I want to tell you a little bit about the Kwanisha of yesterday. The Kwanisha of yesterday was a poor black girl growing up in the South Bronx in the projects with a mother who had a severe drug problem trying to figure out my life. I looked around my life when I was eight years old and I said, I don't want this life for myself. And the way that manifested was in my second grade journal, I wrote, I, really to myself, I guess, not to my teacher, that I wanted to jump out the window and take the dog with me. Of course, she called for a parent teacher conference and my mother didn't go, but my brother did, my brother Eddie. And he told me that day that he would be really sad if I killed myself. Hi, working wife. And I'm telling you that story because 
is really pivotal because it really drove me that day. I looked around, I said, I don't want this life for myself and I'm going to make different decisions. And I heard a voice that said, go to Harvard and become a doctor. Now that only could have been God because as an eight year old girl, like I said, from the South Bronx <laughs> and poor, I, I didn't have any perception of that, but it drove my academic success. But the thing that came along with me was the depression was the suicidal thoughts, were all those things that I held and I kept, I didn't talk about it, I didn't tell anyone about it. And I held on to my brother telling me that he would be really sad if he killed, if I killed myself, so I didn't. But my freshman year of college, my brother was murdered, my brother Eddie. And that stressor activated what I consider my predisposition that I have for my family for mental health and I got bipolar disorder, or I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So for 10 years from 2002 to 2012, I suffered from mental health while at an Ivy League university. And I, and I shared this story because in 2012 in June, I considered an attempt or even an attempt on my own life. I was in my studio apartment. I sat on the floor and with a razor and a bottle of Benadryl. And I said, this is it. I'm tired. I'm tired of struggling. Even though I had all these successes, it was this real internal fatigue that I can't even describe. Um, luckily, I, well, I guess luckily I texted my partner at the time, who's now my fiance, and I said, please tell my son that I love him because he was with my son, our three-month-old son. And I proceeded to write a suicide letter because I felt at least what I owed to my family was an explanation. And I started that letter with saying, would my three-month-year-old son be better off without me? And while I was writing this letter, thank God that I did, that it wound up being four pages back in front, events were occurring in the background. My fiance called, who not I consider my mother, who's my surrogate mother, Dr. Carlene Burrell McGray. And she eventually came, busted down the door with the ambulance. And luckily I wound up just taking a couple of Benadryl just to make myself go to sleep because the writing released all the emotions. Many of you know the power of writing and journaling. And that day, I was sent to the hospital. And the thing was, that was my third inpatient hospitalization for these suicidal thoughts. This was the actual time where I had a plan and I was going to implement it. And so here I am, literally, this is three years ago now. It was the beginning of July. It was July, between July um, 1st and 3rd of 2012. I'm sitting in the hospital and I'm looking around at people with kind of more severe expressions of mental health. And I'm sitting there like, how the hell did I get here? How did I get here? Right? And so I started writing again. Writing is my tool. I have over 15 years of journals and I just analyzed them for my master's thesis. Um, and I wrote at the end that I'm stronger than this. And I'm not talking about the strong black woman type of strong, but I knew in that moment that I had enough in me, particularly my mind, I believe the mind is very powerful, that I had enough in me that I could overcome and live and manage what I was struggling with. So I said, I'm stronger than this. And two weeks from then, I had a job created for me at a prominent statewide organization, social justice organization, that's my background. And a year and a half later, I had another position created for me at the top of my company where they created a co-executive director position all before I was 30 years old. So I share this because this wasn't luck. It wasn't magic. Even though I had all this mental health stuff, I like to consider myself or what I used to call myself a success scholar. I am fascinated by high performance, personal development and professional development. So what I decided to do when I wrote I'm stronger than this I decided to implement all those things that I was learning and that I had taught myself and read and took courses about. So I share my story with you because when we are facing circumstances that seem extreme, it could be events, circumstances, personal um, challenges, issues, right? You could have a, a mental issue like me and, and you're looking at where you want to go and where you are and there's this disconnect. You're like, how the hell am I going to get from here to there? We can give up. We can give up and we can give in. And my story is just a demonstration that you don't have to give up or give in. And what I did was really leverage the strategies and tools 
to save my life, that I used to save my life and achieve professionally. And I created this community, the Black Women Rise community. Um, and I also used it as research <laughs> during my master's program and piloting and studying and trying to understand why Black women, first with me, right, looking at Black womanhood, looking at mental health and our battle to exist, why we struggle the way we struggle. And I know that we have cultural, we have personal and societal limitations that are basically making these statistics come up, right? That we are in the lowest positions in our companies, that many of us are underemployed, we are underpaid in a number of those things. And the recent research, the 2015 research, which I share on the website, says that, oh, well, it's because white men are in power and we need to teach them unbiased, do some unbiased training so that they see us because white men who tend to be in power often promote and sponsor and mentor those who look like them. So even unconsciously, right? We And everyone does this. You, you invest often in people who look like you. But social change is great. Like I said, my background, social justice, I was community organized. I used to be on the front lines, all that stuff. But you don't have to depend on someone else changing for you to have success. And that's what this community is all about. It's about preparing black women who are high achievers, who are current and emerging leaders for the next level by helping you to become a proactive contributor to your development and success. So I share many of the tools and strategies and people, <laughs> mentors. So I don't want to come off as a guru. I, like I said, I'm almost a success scholar expert. I'm an expert at studying success, implementing it and executing it. So yes, I have my results and I can help you get results, but I'm also sharing resources, tools and strategies from women, black women who have proven these things too. So I'm not just saying this has worked for me. It's actually worked as a system and formulas. And that's what I do with the coaching and mentoring. So that's a little bit about me. I just wanted to make sure you understood who you were signing up to hang out with <laughs> when you joined the Black Women Rise community. And I am extremely in love and dedicated to Black women. Um, so yes. yay! But I wanted to do this big announcement because we launched officially the Black Women Rise community this week, Monday, with the 12 effective leadership resources for Black women. If you don't have your copy, you can go to blackwomenrise.com with an E, blackwomen with an E, dot rise.com and get your guide. And I made a call to action yesterday. Yesterday we had about 204, well not about, we had exactly when I made the post, 204 women who I'm calling you my trailblazers who decided to take charge of their lives by getting the guide. And today, as of when I started this video, we had 345 women, black women, and maybe some men in there because I saw some names, I'm not quite sure. But <laughs> we have now in our community, at least on our email list, the people I know who got and took advantage of the guide, 345 women who said yes to taking charge of their careers and lives. So I wanted to give you a big round of applause for those who are live on the Periscope. You can just tap the screen, tap the screen. Let's all celebrate together. Woo! Because we are a third way to our goal to impacting 1,000 black women. Now, why 1,000? The reason why I chose 1,000 is that when you look at a lot of the literature about social change, particularly social change online, it's all about you have a tribe when there's 1,000 women. And many of us are alone as professionals. You might be the only black woman in, even if you start from college, <laughs> you might be the only black woman in your class. You might be the only black woman in your job or in your department, in your industry. And we don't often have connections to black women leaders. So black women here are a little bit ahead of us, um, whether it's a manager, mid-manager, or even um, those higher levels of senior administration. So my goal in that thousand number is to create a community right? And so that we can leverage it because the statistics show. So if you go to blackwomenrise.com and you go to the top and click on movement, the statistics show that when black women are in leadership, particularly political leadership, and I have an article about that, we change shit. And I curse. I get it from one of my mentors too. She gave me permission to curse. So for those who don't like cursing, I'll say that a different way. When we are in leadership, 
We change the world. We advocate for children. We advocate for health. We advocate for education. We advocate for economic and educational development and stability. So I know that if we prepare and we invest in more black women and creating a community that's just dedicated to that, we will change the world. So my goal is to really cultivate leaders, change makers, game changers, history makers. That's the goal of the Black Women Rise community. And I'm just a piece of it. Because all of you, and as I'm going to share my sisters in success, so in the next week, we're going to actually have some spotlights of women who have taken charge of their lives so that you can be inspired. I know that if we get to a thousand, this, this community is going to change things. So right now, like I said, we have 350. And one day, we signed up about 150 women. Let's do that again. Right? Let's get to our 1,000. So when you go to our Facebook page, so if you go to facebook.com backslash Quanisha Speaks, or you can go to blackwomenrise.com and just go to the contact me page. It'll take you direct to the Facebook page. And Quanisha is Q-U-A-N-I-S-H-A Speaks. You'll see a post. Just share the graphic. It says, join the movement, blackwomenrise.com. Help another sister rise to her next level. And so I'm going to charge you with two things, those who are watching this video. One, to share it. So if you have it, swipe that way <laughs> to the right. Share it with your Twitter followers. Share it with your friends. If you're watching this later, take the link, post it. Right, It's a 24-hour replay, and I'll actually paste the recording in the Facebook group. I want to leave you with two things. One, I want to charge you with showing up. Not just showing up in the Black Women Rights community, but show up in your life. One of my great friends and now accountability partner, Dr. Christy Monk, said, one of her mentors told her this uh, this week, how you show up for yourself is a reflection of how you show up for everyone else. And for those of us who want to be leaders or who are already leaders, because black women, we lead stuff already. We're in church. We're in our communities. That's a fact <laughs> already, okay? So you got leadership skills. The thing is that we need to translate that onto some other areas of your life, right? And help you feel confident in that. But it helps you show up for other people the same way. So if you're loving on yourself, if you're showing up for yourself that way, you're going to show up in those ways for others. Right now, the statistics show that many of us are not showing up well for ourselves. We're not tending to our health. We're over-sacrificing. We're over-committing. And that's what we're doing for other people. We're over-sacrificing for our families and our communities to our own detriment because it's at our expense. So we need to shift that. And that's what I'm going to talk about later and helping you do. So that's my first charge. Show up. Right? So first, show up for yourself. The second charge I have for you is to get and stay connected. So go to blackwomenrise.com. If you haven't gotten the guide, get it. If you have the guide, share it. Take that link, paste it, tag your friends on Facebook and share it. And then show up in our Facebook community. Show up by making comments on the blog post and share your thoughts because that's how we're going to invest in one another and making sure that we leverage and have success. And the last way I want you to get and stay connected, so in that vein, is to talk to me. <laughs> like I said, I have been a student of success. I have, as you see in the guide, I have connections with black women millionaires, black women multiple six figures, black women who have been killing it online. So Dr. Venus was at a Thurman, um, LaShonda Henry. I share the information in the guide of some of my mentors. But I want to talk to you, right? So what I do is that I offer 30-minute complimentary sessions. And I call them the Who You Be Discovery Sessions. Because my whole thing with leadership is that you have to know who you are and what you value in order to be a good and effective leader. Oh, my little message is coming up. Oh, my apologies. I have a 1 o'clock call and everything started popping up. So I'm here. <laughs> So anyway, I was talking about the Who You Be Discovery Sessions. It's a 30-minute complimentary session with me. We have a one-on-one -on, -one on the phone, really to help you get clarity on what you want and where you're going, 
want to give you a plan, right, and some idea on what is holding you back right now that's going to impede you from getting to your next level and having success. So if you'd like to talk to me and have the complimentary section session, excuse me, you can go to blackwomanrise.com and just go to the top to the work with me tab and it'll give you all the information about what's covered in the session, why I do it, <laughs> and you can apply there. So welcome to the community, the Black Woman Rise movement. Invite five of your black women sisters and if you want to some guys because the information is nice for everybody but our our information is pro black women even though I'm a lover of all but we're pro black women here and our advancement so invite five women go to blackwomenrise.com get the 12 effective leadership resources for black women or go to our Facebook group so facebook.com backslash Kwanisha Speaks so that I can put a face to your name, we can be in discussion so that I can see how I can support you, and let's talk. So go to blackwomenrise.com and click on the work with me so that I can have a conversation with you. So welcome to the community, and thank you for joining me in the movement, and let's impact 1,000. So I hope you join me in the outreach team <laughs> and doing that. So I love you. I hope you all have a good rest of your day, and thank you for hanging out with me.